Hello. Today I'd like to show you one of my latest uh, projects that I've built. It's a um, LED matrix, 32 by 32 RGB LEDs for a total of 1,024 LEDs. Um, I've built this display in conjunction with a Teensy 3.1 um, microprocessor controller board. Um, besides that, I've built in uh, uh, IR remote control and uh, a temperature sensor and a real time clock. Uh, so, this I call this thing a light appliance because it can be used for a lot of different things. As you'll see in this video, um, I've uh, coded a lot of patterns into it for just entertainment. It can, uh, it can uh, render uh, animated GIFs at 32 by 32 resolution. Uh, it can be a open or close sign. It can be a mood, mood light, yeah, if you like. Um, there's all kinds of applications uh, for this device. Uh, and I just built it just because it's fun. The device uh, looks like it's off now, but it really isn't. It's uh, waiting for a command from the infrared remote control. A module that I have right now so I will press the power button and you can see the um, a menu effectively comes up it's uh, uh, waiting to be commanded on what to do and you can see the command is the current command that would be selected if I hit the select key on the remote would be to turn the unit off so if I press that the unit goes into virtual off mode again Pressing the power button back on, um, comes right back on, and you use the sideways arrow keys to to navigate to the function that you'd like uh, to perform. So the first function is called animation, and there's about a hundred animations in, inside this unit on a SD memory card that's in there, and we'll show that in a minute. Uh, the next function by pressing the uh, right arrow key is the pattern mode where it selects random patterns. There's about 30 uh, graphical patterns that I've coded into the thing and this mode selects them randomly. The next mode is the select pattern mode. So if you have a pattern that you like and you, you'd like to have this thing you know, continuously display that, that's the mode you'd select. Right click again. Here's the uh, mood light mode. Click again. <coughs> this is the mode for setting the time and the date as um, it has a real time clock as I mentioned built in and you can display time, date and temperature actually. The next mode is time and date mode. Uh, this is the mode you'd select if you just want to display the time and the date. Clicking again, the time and temperature mode. Uh, in this mode the current temperature is continuously displayed along with the current time is scrolled across the screen. Um, the open mode, open sign mode, uh, is uh, uh, something I coded up to look like an open sign that would be used for a business. Uh, the close sign mode is the opposite of that um, as we will show but um, it just says closed and currently displays the hours that a business might have. Clicking again, we're back up at the top in the, in the turn off mode. Okay, so let's, first off, let's go to the, uh, some of the easier modes to explain. Um, let's go to the time and date mode. In this mode, from that other menu, I just hit the select button in the middle and you go into this mode and you get a continuous display of time and date from the real time clock. It updates itself every second um, or every minute, I should say. Um, and we'll do this until you hit the power button again to, to move back to the select mode. If we go over one more to the time and temperature mode and select it, now you see the current temperature along with a scrolling time and date. So this might be useful just in a, in a room somewhere or a business somewhere, just to remind people of the temperature and the time and the date. Pressing the power button again, 
I move back up. The open sign mode is just really a placeholder. It, any kind of open sign could be implemented in software. Uh, right now, here's just a simple one. Um, it just continually does this, uh, drawing open at the top and then please come in at the bottom. Um, not very impressive, but it could be really enhanced. The close sign mode is approximately the same thing. Um, it shows closed, of course, and then I put it in a scrolling sc string at the bottom with the numbers of a biz uh, the uh, time that the business is open. So this could be in a window and could let people know that your business is closed. Going back up, um, let's before we go into animation. Let's go into the pattern mode. In the pattern mode, like I said, um, there's all kinds of highly colorful coded patterns um, in the software inside the LED matrix. Um, they display for about 30 seconds apiece, and they are just randomly picked from, from the list of, of patterns that are available. Uh, most of them, like I said, are, are very, very colorful. Um, and just kind of fun to watch. Now, the, the the pattern is just changed as you can see. The um, camera that I'm using doesn't do well with highly saturated colors, um, so the co the colors you see on this video aren't nearly as as beautiful as the colors you see on the display. Also, artifacts of the um, the uh, camera include a, kind of a blurring or a ghosting around all the bright colored LEDs. None of this exists in the real box. Um, there's no ghosting at all and just uh, bright vivid colors. So most of these patterns do geometric shapes. Uh, this is a um, just random circles pattern with random colors. We'll just let this run for a second so you can see um, various patterns. These are plasma patterns of various types and I, I'm afraid some of this will look washed out but uh, there's like six different plasma patterns uh, coded in the software and uh, each pattern can be displayed with a random selection of palettes so um, it's really um, hard to get the same pattern to repeat twice. You, what you see generally changes all the time. Um, even though it's all you know, coded into the software, a lot of randomness goes into making the patterns unique every time it displays. This is another highly colorful pattern that's probably driving the camera nuts. Here's another highly colorful pattern. Uh, power button again. We go back up to the higher level menu and let's go over one. And you can see this is the select pattern mode. So if I select this, you'll see the name of the pattern being displayed across the bottom. And as I hit the right or left arrow, um, the pa each pattern is named and uh, you can see, and, and if you were to hit the select button, uh, um, you would select the named pattern of the name that's being displayed right now. T-square is a fractal because um, of various um, depths. The, the fractal is, is rendered at various depths, so it kind of looks like a T-square in, in this one. Going back up to the to the menu, we'll move on. So you can see there's there's a whole bunch of them in here. 
Let's go to the welcome pattern. It just draws this kind of web of colored lines that keep changing in color with the welcome scrolling across the middle. This might be good for a business as well, just to have uh, in the window to uh, just uh, welcome customers into your place and kind of attract their attention. Now I've hit it twice, so we're, we're back to the highest level menu. Um, we'll go into the animations. Like I said, there's about a hundred simple animations encoded in the box. And uh, they are just selected uh, randomly as well. Code inside the LED matrix decodes these in real time. Um, there's no storage of individual frames or anything. These, these patterns are being decoded in real time and displayed. Some of them are quite wild. Some of them are kind of peaceful. Um, at the current time, there isn't an ability to select individual animations to repeat over and over, but that could be encoded in the software too. This is called UFO. As you can see, this would, could be quite a um, attention getter and conversation piece if you had something like this. Uh, in your house or your business. Uh, I plan on writing up plans on how to build this, though I haven't done this that yet. Uh, since I just finished it, I thought, first off, we'll do a video to see if there's any interest. And if there is, I will, uh, I will make the code and, um, and hardware uh, description available, schematics and whatnot, so people could build it on their own. I should say that um, besides the case that I built out of wood uh, to hold this, um, all the parts are available from Spark Fun in Boulder, Colorado. I bought everything there. Everything including the remote control. I, I'm using a Spark Fun remote control to control the, the thing. It's nice. There's no... There's no buttons or switches on the device itself. You just plug it in um, and start interacting with it with the IR remote control. The TNC 3.1 processor um, is an ARM processor. It's running at 96 megahertz. It has a uh, Lots of uh, flash uh, for program storage and lots of RAM, 64K of RAM for, uh, you know, variable storage. This, and uh, due to the driver that I'm using in this box, um, written by Lewis at Embedded Creations, um, all the... All the manipulation of the display is done in the background via DMA, and uh, so the processor pretty much is um, available. All the foreground uh, processing power is available to actually run the patterns. Uh, Lewis did an excellent job with, uh, with the driver, and I probably wouldn't have this product or this project done right now if it wasn't for him, because writing the driver must have... Must have been a large undertaking. So anyway, there's my pirate. Um, if during the animations, if you continually hit the power off button, um, when the animation ends, you will be brought back into the uh, uh, select mode. And if we go into the turn off mode and I hit the select button, the device goes off. 